Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. Happy New Year, everybody. We're happy to be joining you today at the start of 2022. Let's hope that doesn't mean 2020 the sequel, but I'm here with Seth V. Uh, and we're going to talk about some things to look forward to in the knife industry in the coming year. So let's get right into it. All right, folks, basically, um, in addition to what we're going to tell you here today or talk about today, really this video is an invitation to you guys. In the comments below, let us know your thoughts on the topics at hand today. Predictions for the knife world in 2022. Things to look forward to or things to keep an eye on. And, of course, your personal wish lists for things you'd like to see. Uh, we're going to start with our own predictions for the year. Um, and Seth had some really good stuff. He's uh, about some lock stuff, uh, lock types, etc. We're going to go over um, that we think we might see this year. Seth, how are hey, you? Hey, okay. So my prediction for 2022 is that we're going to see a lot more of alternative locking mechanisms. Mm -hmm. um, I think this train started rolling with the Protec Malibu, a manual button lock flipper. Oh, excellent. You have one. I do. Um, it, it feels and operates different from the way that uh, some of the button locks of the past work. It doesn't work mechanically different. It just it just feels rather different. The way it's you can... a very fluid motion uh, and very friction-free experience. I mean, you see you got that drop-shut nature. And I think you're right. I um, mean, tons of manufacturers I know have their eye on this knife because of the splash it has made. So... It's almost unfair to, to to say we predict there will be more. We haven't seen anything confirmed, but we know people are looking at it. I mean, yeah. we, just, we just saw the Civivi Cogent uh, come out, which is very much this type of knife. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the Kaiser Cormorant has the same kind of feel. I think it's taken a while for manufacturers to really perfect their own mechanisms to, to give it that drop shut fluidity. Uh, that people are looking for, but I think uh, I think they've some of them have figured it out, and I think we're going to see a lot more models in 2022 with manual button lock. Yeah, I uh, agree. Mechanisms. I agree. It's definitely a wave that I don't think has crested yet. Um, maybe 2022 we'll be able to say is the year of the button lock. Uh, we'll know more in about 12 months. <laughs> um, yeah, but it, it's certainly a wave that's on the rise. I agree with you there. Yeah, uh, the other thing. I noticed as I was kind of just researching for this video, the patent for the Spider Girl compression lock expired in February of 2021. Oh, really? Yes. So, so that's that's another lock um, that you know allows you to close the blade like this button lock while keeping your fingers out of the path, which is something I am, am a big proponent of. Yeah, yeah. It's a great lock. It's super simple in its operation, you know, very lightweight, doesn't require a lot of extra parts. Um, I think the the lock geometry is challenging to get right. So I will be really interested to see if somebody kind of takes on that challenge. I'd like to see somebody give it a give it a shot. That'd be cool. Um, yeah, I just just who for do fun, you, I have a compression who do you lock here. Think, who do you think would be if you were to make a prediction, what company do you think stands the best shot of maybe seeing this from? Um, I kind of want to say Hogue because they were the first to really pick up the torch of the crossbar lock after the Benchmade mm -hmm. um, Axis lock uh, patent expired. And they did a fantastic job with it. Um, they definitely I'd have. like to see what they could do with a compression lock. Yeah, I'm, I'm torn. Like I I didn't wasn't thinking Hogue. I was thinking maybe Sog because they're pretty hungry, but they've really done a good job with the crossbar lock as well with their XR lock. And I don't know if yeah. either of them. I don't know if either of them wants to take uh, the spotlight away from those night those locks since they're doing so well. But it could be interesting. It could be interesting. I wonder if. Like the Axis lock, the patent overseas is still in effect, or was at least. So I mm. wonder if that's the same with the compression lock. So I don't know if any of the uh, the import companies will be able to do anything yet. Yeah, that I don't know. That I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. Something to watch out for, though, in the year. Yeah, ago. yeah. A soft prediction. We'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Um, any other locks uh, on your on your radar? Oh, yeah. I think the Shark lock is just getting started. 
Um, you know, the, the Demco AD20, the 20.5. I just picked you know, up the we, 20S myself. Uh, it's a great knife. The, the lock is fantastic. And it's got everything you want in a modern lock. It's totally ambidextrous. It's strong. Very fluid, open and closed. Keeps your hand out of the path of the blade. Uh, a lot of people have yet to try it. I think they want to. I think they're going to like it and maybe <laughs> uh, buy another knife with a shark lock. So Yeah, which of course you can only get that from Demco Knives at this point. It's That is a freshly patented design essentially. Mm -hmm. um, and we haven't really, we've seen new variations on the AD20 since it was introduced in 2019. No, 2020. Mm -hmm. um, so I wonder if we'll see a new model this year from them. Something to yeah, look out for knock, well. knock on wood. Um, well, in terms of a, of a prediction of mine, um, and this one's almost a no-brainer. It's almost insulting, but I'll do it anyway. MagnaCut. We're going to see more MagnaCut steel next year on production folders. Um, really hot new steel. Laren Thomas, uh, the uh, the designer of this, had a, has an instant success with it. But the only thing you've seen so far has been like small batch stuff like this dogwood cub that I've got. Uh, not a lot of chance for big production companies to roll it out into the lineup yet. But I, I can almost guarantee you we'll see more. I, the only, I don't know anything official. Um, but so far, Spyderco, their native 5 salt and LC200N is switching, mm -hmm. to, switching to MagnaCut. Um, and you can actually pre-order that from us right now. We don't know when it uh, will be shipping. Um, but that, as far as I know, is the first production folder with this awesome steel, but not yeah, going to be first, the last. The first to be announced, as far as I'm aware. Uh, and it kind of, they, they, yeah, they snuck it into their catalog on yeah, the sly. <laughs> definitely a surprise to, to all of us. Um, and doubly so because it was in the Salt series, which you know, is a pretty high bar to clear. You got to, yeah. your steel has to perform, you know, with, with virtually no corrosion under the most extreme testing environments. Uh, so if it passed those tests, I mean, whew, I can't yeah. wait to try it out. I yeah. don't have a magna cut knife yet, but I will definitely be getting one. Yeah. And, and that's something for people to remember. Uh, we, we've had folks asking, you know, virtually since this steel was announced, when are we going to see it in, in more folders? When are we going to see it in more folders? Well, each manufacturer is going to have their testing process, especially reputable manufacturers that have a solid warranty for a brand new unknown steel like that. They want to make sure they know what they're getting so that they can guarantee you what you're getting to. Those things take a yeah. little bit of time. So the fact we're starting to see the first ones show up within a year of the steel being announced, that's a pretty, pretty fast turnaround, actually. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree. Um, but yeah, I mean, just in terms of the, the high end blade materials, that's, you know, we're really pushing what powder metallurgy can do uh, with that steel. And I know Laren Thomas is already working on some some other stuff as well. So be interesting to see the way the direction blade materials take in the coming year. Yeah, yeah, I think um, new blade materials and sort of different exploring different avenues of uh, steel metallurgy. Uh, I, I hope to see more of in the coming year and beyond. Um, there were some exciting materials that came out this year that I think are also maybe just getting started, just starting to get into people's hands and uh, prove themselves in the real world. Um, I know you got one of the Sandrin Torinos. I did. Um, and of course, this this blade material, their, uh, their tungsten carbide wasn't released last year, but things are starting to, to reach a, a momentum on these guys. Not just these guys, but Terrain 365 as well with their uh, dendritic cobalt blade material. Mm -hmm. We're starting to see some stuff that's, you know, not ceramic <laughs> coming onto blades. Um, I wonder if anyone else is, is cooking up something special. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard of a, a material called elastic ceramic that a uh, knife maker, I forget his name, but his Instagram knives, his Instagram handle is KK uh, Knives Switzerland. Uh, he's been experimenting with, it seems to have great potential. Um, we'll see what happens. I don't know if it'll, something will come out in 2022 or later, but um, you know, the material science of blades is always advancing. And it's cool to see that, it used to be that 
materials that weren't steel were kind of a gimmick. You know, they had a, just a very limited utility. Mm -hmm. they, they weren't tough enough to really replace steel in any meaningful way. But I don't know. We, we may be seeing some new materials that can yeah. that can get us there. I mean, yeah, like it begs the question, are we are we reaching the zenith of what can be achieved with particle metallurgy? And if so, what is the next big enthusiast thing? And it might be these these alternate, you know, alternate elements, alternate materials. Yeah. Exciting stuff. Yeah. And it may, it, may, <laughs> it may take a few years um, to to get there. Obviously, steel is entrenched. Um, but I'd say this is something to just something to keep an eye on in 2022. Maybe not a, an outright prediction, but things to uh, things to be aware of, things to keep your uh, your attentions on. Mm -hmm. um, I've got something else along those lines as well. Things to just keep an eye on, things to see how they uh, shake out. Uh, and that is SOG or SOG, depending on, you know, which flavor uh, flavor you prefer. Um, <laughs> but just a couple of weeks ago, it was announced that GSM Outdoor uh, had acquired them or is in the process of completing the acquisition. Uh, and this is the same company that picked up Cold Steel a year ago. So they've snapped up another knife company now. Mm -hmm. Um I don't think it's going to wind up affecting the the product at least in the next 6 months, maybe even the whole year because you know things are take a while to be engineered and worked on. So things are in the pipeline. Yeah. Um but I hope that they really take care of the people uh that they've that they've acquired, not that you can acquire people, but the, the people working for SOG uh, as they've acquired the company because the design team behind it, the 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 minds that have really engineered a turnaround at this company. I'd hate to see them go to waste uh, because mm -hmm. the products have been fantastic. I mentioned their XR lock, their version of the crossbar lock here. They do a fantastic job. This is their Kiku XR. Um, and there, there's just some really talented people. And I, yeah, I don't want to see it go to waste because I, I feel like there's so many of these SOGs I like, but I feel like 2022 is going to be the year they made something that made me go, that's the one I'm finally buying. Because I, I, I haven't actually picked up any of these uh, these new SOGs yet. This one uh, right here is not mine personally. Um, they're excellent. There's some excellent knives, including that Terminus XR, which was 2019. Really was mm -hmm. the start of the turnaround. Um, and I've just been waiting for just the right one for uh, for for my purposes. But yeah, something to something to watch out for. I hope they uh, I hope they are good caretakers of that brand. Yeah, it's interesting. GSM's been buying knife companies the way I buy knives. They've just been <laughs> picking them up left and right. Um, yeah, uh, Cold Steel. Um, uh, the the looking at what happened to Cold Steel just in terms of the product, like nothing really changed. In fact, some stuff that. Cold Steel was struggling to um, manufacture in enough quantities to keep in stock, came back mm -hmm. uh, because of GSM's big investment in inventory. So, true. Um, true. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm I am uh, uh, optimistic that SOG will continue their kind of modern rebirth renaissance. That's just been giving the brand so much energy and yeah. interest in the past couple of years. Me too. So speaking of manufacturing, you just mentioned um, something else to, to keep being aware of is, you know, supply chain stuff. Disruptions are real. Uh, they haven't really subsided yet. Um, so pay attention to that sort of thing, especially as we get towards the next holiday. Uh, if it was anything like this one, you're going to want to purchase early, but it's going to be uh, interesting to see how that continues to shake out with disruptions to companies' production plans. We've certainly seen companies this past year having to delay new products because they can't get enough stuff on hand to even build what's already in the lineup that everyone's buying up as fast as they can. So yeah. there's got to be a balance there somewhere. Um, definitely haven't hit it yet, but again, something interesting uh, to always be aware of. What about you, David? What about like your personal collection or anything that you're hoping to see or pick up or look for in the coming year? Are you talking uh, like a, a knife New Year's resolution I can fail at or just general uh, <laughs> general things? Uh, yes. Look, I just want you to fail at a resolution right along with me this year. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> well, um, I don't know that I have a specific revolu revolution. <laughs> Uh, or resolution for that matter. Um, but I'm 
you guys know I'm a crossbar lock junkie. I want to see more, more, even more companies taking up the banner uh, of this excellent lock pattern. Um, definitely into more button locks myself. But yeah, more more crossbar locks, more cool practical designs. I'm uh, I'm always looking forward to seeing and want to see more of. Um, a specific genre I'm fan a fan of. Uh, as you know, evidenced by these lovely plaques you might see behind me right here, uh, the genre of camp knives crossed over with cooking knives. It's this sort of camp cooking crossover genre. It's still really nascent in what's out there. There's not a ton of options. Uh, there's some really good options. If I do say so myself, but um, man, I want to see more of that out there. I want to see more affordable stuff out there that people can sink their uh, their teeth into as well. I, that would make me a real happy boy. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I'd love to see that type of knife become yeah, almost like its own little genre. I wish there was, uh, I wish every brand would consider it uh, an essential part of their lineup. I think, yeah. I, think I think it's, people it's want not something as, like that. I think people want it, but they don't necessarily realize that they do yet. Um, because it's not as it doesn't have like the sex appeal of like bushcraft or survival, this kind of self reliance thing. Mm -hmm. It's more practical. I mean, when you go camping, when most people go camping, some folks like you or me might be going out making feather sticks, trying to make traps, building fires, doing all that sort of thing. Most mm -hmm. people are going to go to camp and they need to eat. Yes. So you better, you know, you're going to want to have a decent knife that can do the food prep stuff and if it can handle those camp tasks as well. I mean, that's money right there. Yeah, yeah. Outside of a hypothetical survival scenario or a just for fun kind of bushcraft survival scenario, what you're definitely going to be doing every time you go camping is cooking. Yeah. So, yeah, let's see more knives that that are excellent at that specific type of camp. Yeah, task. I would love that. I would love it. Uh, what about you? Anything on your personal wish list or any uh, new resolutions that you can fail at yourself <laughs> this year? <laughs> well, I've completely abandoned the uh, fewer spider codes resolution. I'm, I'm <laughs> just going to, I'm going to get what appeals to me and, and not feel guilty about it. But uh, words to live I, by. Yeah, I am definitely looking for a pocket fixed blade um, next year. I'd love to find that perfect EDC fixed blade solution for me. Uh, it's another category that is just starting to grow. I think it has a lot of room to grow. Um, the idea of a sheath that doesn't go on your belt, but clips to your pocket is kind of a new one. Um, yeah. So yeah, let's, let's see I'm, more of those. I'd like to see more. I'm a big proponent of that as well. I mean, you know, I've, I've got a knife I designed like that, but we've seen some really good releases this past year. Not a ton, but definitely more than before. So maybe we even sneak this into our predictions section earlier. We're going to see some more pocket fix blades next year. It's not going to be a, a critical mass type of number, but there's going to be more, I bet. I think so. I think so. All right. Well, do you have anything else uh, to add? I think I've uh, covered what I've had in mind. No, that's about, that's about all I can predict or really hope to see. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm, Looking forward to 2022. I think there's going to be a lot of great new knives that we can say for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely think so. Um, looking forward to getting back out there. Hopefully uh, things will st start to stabilize this year. We'll just have to take it as it comes and see how it goes. Definitely. Um, all right. Again, this video, I know we talked a little bit here, but this video is about you folks out there. What are you looking forward to? Do you have any predictions of your own? And even if there's not something that you think will happen, what do you wish would happen? Let us know in the comments. Um, normally I say, if you want any of the knives in this video, we'll leave links in the description. And there were a few knives, so there'll be a couple links down there. Uh, but if you're interested, you can go check out check us out at our links there. Make sure to sign up for our Knife Rewards program as always, because at least you're going to earn some free money back to spend on your next knife when you put your money down on a new one today. I'm David C. Anderson. That's Seth V. right over there. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Bye. See you next year. Wait, it already is next year. Oh, no. <laughs> and scene. <laughs>